Hello and welcome to the Energy and Oil and Gas Interim Results Analyst Presentation. Throughout the presentation, all participants will be in listen-only mode and afterwards there will be a question and answer session. And just to remind you, this is being recorded. Today I am pleased to present Macias Rigas, CEO, and Panos Benos, CFO. I will now hand you over to Macias Rigas, who will start off the presentation. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's very happy to have you here on our uh, interim results uh, announcement. Let me start uh, the presentation today uh, with what is very close to our heart, which is uh, our achievements in the HSE. Um, we've had a very good first start, first half of the year with no lost time incidents, and uh, we're very proud that we have been uh, operating with uh, zero uh, lost time incidents uh, for over 3 million man hours in our sites uh, across the, the organization, and most importantly, where we're building our FPSO in, uh, in China. Um, I'll move to slide three uh, and talk a little bit about uh, something which is also becoming more and more important for us and for the industry, which is our path to sustainability. Uh, as a business, we take uh, notice of what is happening around us in the environment, uh, and uh, we will be reporting in uh, 2019 in accordance with CDP requirements for our sustainability report and uh, taking some big steps uh, towards uh, energy, making energy and a sustainable company for the future, uh, linking executive pay to ESG goals and uh, taking a number of uh, measures that, uh, that we will be announcing in 2020. Uh, most importantly, as a business, we are contributing significantly to the improvement of the environment uh, in Israel where our gas production that uh, at the moment is contracted to uh, generate 4.6 billion cubic meters of gas a year will be uh, allowing the government in Israel to replace a significant amount of electricity produced by coal, saving more than 10 million tons a year of CO2. And uh, this is uh, in line with our strategy to make energy uh, a leader in the Mediterranean, a focus on gas, and a sustainable company for the future. So um, starting uh, on uh, the highlights of uh, the presentation today and what we achieved in the first half of 2019, uh, obviously for us the highlight of the year, first half of the year, was uh, the acquisition of Edison ENP, uh, a business that uh, in 2018 generated $434 million of EBITDAX and an operating cash flow of $300 million. Uh, a transaction which is transformational for energy and transaction that uh, brings to us presence in a number of countries, uh, focus on gas, as always in line with our target, and focus in the Mediterranean. On our ongoing business, Karish and Tanin, our flagship project in Israel, remains on budget and on track for first gas in 2021. Uh, the various work streams that we will be going through later are all on track to deliver the project as promised uh, first gas in 2021. In addition to our ongoing project, we made a significant gas discovery in Karish North. We drilled two of the three development wells in, uh, in Karish and uh, further increased our gas sales uh, in uh, Israel, reaching a total of 4.7 billion cubic meters a year. Uh, we have started a major capital allocation review, which uh, intend to review the entire portfolio, including uh, our Greek, Israeli, uh, and uh, the new operations that we inherit from uh, the Edson portfolio to use the capital from our shareholders in the, uh, the best way. Uh, capital discipline for us is extremely important, so we want to use our capital in uh, the projects that will bring the continuous growth of energy and as we've done uh, throughout our past. Beyond that, um, we were awarded four new exploration licenses in the Israeli Exclusive Economic Zone, and uh, that further strengthens our presence in the country, in a country that is growing, its uh, gas demand is growing, and uh, our footprint in Israel is continuing to grow. Uh, in Greece, uh, the Epsilon project was uh, another success of the first half of the year, where we uh, have discovered additional resources and uh, we are now continuing the development plan for the project. And uh, at the end of uh, 20, uh, at the end of June 2019, 
our cash and undrawn debt facilities were sitting at about a billion dollars, uh, showing the strength that we have on our balance sheet and our ability to fund all our projects and the various activities we are involved in. On page five uh, of the presentation, uh, we are continuing the trajectory of growth. I remind all of you that we started with 2 million barrels back in 2008, and uh, after 11 years, we're now sitting at uh, 639 million barrels of 2P um, reserves, and uh, this is a trajectory that will continue. We intend to continue to grow organically uh, the business and uh, obviously take advantage of opportunities in our region, as we've done until now, delivering continuous value to our shareholders. Uh, I would like to pass on to Panos now to take you through the actual results, and then we'll go through the projects uh, one by one. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'll follow up with the, from the three main points that uh, Matthias mentioned. Uh, number one, the transformational transaction we did uh, with Edison, which we announced early July. Uh, unfortunately, this is not reflected in our first uh, Half year results, um, but uh, we can go through them pretty quickly. Um, we followed up from a strong uh, end of 2018, so the result of this is a 50% increase in revenue compared to the first half 2018, 50% increase in sales. Uh, the fact that we kept costs and uh, the cost discipline, as Matthias mentioned, resulted in net tax um, almost 40% up. And of course, cash from operations uh, being almost double to what we had achieved first half of 2018. Um, the second point, capital allocation, uh, that we will expand a little bit uh, more uh, further down the presentation, is resulted in a guidance of more than 40 million less capex to what we had expected for 2019. Um, and the third point that we made was the discovery of Paris North. You can see that capex for the first half was 350 million, 300 million of that invested in Israel, uh, 30 million only in uh, exploration. Having a discovery with only 30 million exploration expenditure is uh, something that we're very proud of and we hope the technical team continues this trend. Next page, uh, against page, I mean page seven, um, we follow the capital spend as we expect it to be in the, the rest of the year. Uh, the Greece expenditure falls down to around 70 million. Uh, Israel stays as we have guided you, and that reflects what we believe is a project on track. And uh, of course, exploration appraisal, again, most of it already done uh, with high, with great success. Slide eight, again, this reflects the cash waterfall, excluding the capital raise we did early July. Um, what I would like to note here is the CapEx expenditure. Uh, we're spending in Israel as budgeted, and this is one of the times that we're very happy to be paying because ref that reflects milestones uh, met by our contractor. In terms of project finance drawdowns, we have been using our debt facilities, but we still have uh, almost one billion uh, under our facilities to get us through the end of the project. Um, and as I said, uh, end of the year, we didn't have the 265 million equity drawn, and most importantly, we have 200,000 barrels available for sale in our tanks that were sold uh, in uh, September, early September. Next slide uh, is the capital allocation. Um, as a result of that transformational deal, um, optimum capital allocation now for the group is uh, of high importance. Uh, the capital discipline is something that we have in our mind since the IPO, and we have tried to communicate to our investors. The wider portfolio that we need to think now uh, provides a range of profitable projects, other bigger, other smaller, but each one will have to fight hard and compete for uh, capital allocation. The priorities of the group have changed, and uh, we continue, however, being committed to the capital discipline and making sure we do only the most profitable projects. Um, let me continue now with uh, a diver deep into the various uh, projects. I will start uh, with slide 11. Uh, our flagship project in Israel remains on track, as I said earlier. 
with a number of milestones achieved already. Uh, the, the most important one being the building of the FPSO, which is going according to plan. The hull will be delivered, as we have promised, uh, before the end of uh, 2019. Uh, then uh, the hull will sail to uh, Singapore from China to be completed by the Central Marine Top Yard, uh, Shipyard and then we'll move to Israel for uh, hookup and commissioning towards the end of next year. So SPSO remains on track. Uh, drilling, uh, we have drilled the first two development wells, uh, Karish main wells, and we are now drilling the third one that will also be completed before we start the subsea uh, and uh, other operations so that, uh, that will happen in Israel for the following year. The onshore uh, part of the project also is moving according to plan. And uh, we have now completed the pipeline uh, beach crossing at door, and uh, we are moving to install the, the pipeline uh, in the near future that will connect the FPSO to the shore. Uh, page 12 gives some pictures of uh, the actual hull construction from China, and uh, as I said, it will be uh, delivered towards the end of this year. Uh, project remains uh, on track on page 13. 54% of contracted value uh, has been uh, paid to Technip. Uh, physical progress is ahead slightly at 60% and uh, on track for uh, delivery of the project uh, on time. I remind everyone that this is a turnkey EPCIC project where Technip uh, has uh, guaranteed the delivery of the project, uh, all the work streams of the project, uh, and the cost. Uh, is fixed at uh, 1.38 billion uh, as per our contract. Uh, on the drilling side, on page 14, we have uh, drilled the first two wells. We have drilled the Karish North well, and uh, the wells were completed uh, as planned without uh, any surprises, uh, both from uh, the operational side but also on the geological side. Uh, we are benefiting significantly from our, from our batch drilling philosophy that is optimizing costs. Our total spread, including the rig and uh, the other cost for drilling, is at $400,000 a day. It is a fantastic rate that uh, starts, obviously, from the great uh, rate we have secured with Costco, sorry, with, uh, with Stena, for the drill max that is operating at more than 98% uh, uptime uh, throughout the first three wells that we drilled. We have made uh, also a small gas discovery in the D-Sands in Karish, Maine, that uh, we are appraising also with the next wells that we will be drilling. Uh, on, uh, on Karish North, which uh, was the discovery that we announced uh, earlier this year, uh, we estimated that we have gas in place of 1 to 1.5 TCF, a hydrocarbon column of about 250 meters, and very high quality reservoir in the B and the C sand. Um, the well was completed in 45 days and uh, it is uh, well drilled on, on budget and on schedule. Uh, with respect to Parish North, we are planning an appraisal activity later in, uh, in 2019 uh, to, uh, to be able to narrow down uh, the resource range, and we will be issuing a CPR uh, that will be done post the appraisal activity to uh, also include our reserve estimates and uh, we will start then working on the development plan to be able to hook up the Karish North discovery to the main uh, Karish facilities and the beauty of this asset is that uh, it can be hooked up at a very low cost and uh, allow us to continue with additional gas sales uh, in Israel. Uh, beyond that, uh, in 2020 we have a range of drilling opportunities in uh, the five blocks that are in the vicinity of the Karish wells the Karish blocks, and uh, we list here just a couple on page 16, uh, the Hera and Zeus prospects that uh, are, in our views, and the NSAI's best estimates are uh, 245 and 413 uh, BCF of prospective resources. Same with Poseidon and Hermes um, uh, in uh, block 31. And uh, these are activities that we can drill with uh, the rig, since we are holding six options at the moment uh, to utilize this rig uh, for a number of activities. We have not committed yet to any of those wells. Uh, we will be reviewing our exploration strategy in line with what Panos mentioned uh, 
our capital discipline, and we will be allocating funds uh, for exploration and uh, deciding which one of those will take priority. These are uh, wells that have a 60 to 70 percent probability of success, and following the success of Karish North, we are uh, very confident about the ability to find more gas in, uh, in our blocks in Israel. Uh, turning to page 17 to talk a little bit about the market, uh, we are standing at the moment at uh, 4.7 BCM of committed uh, contracts, including the 11 firm contracts that we had signed uh, at uh, IPO and slightly and, and a bit later, uh, the addition of the ore option and the IPM contract. Uh, remaining spare capacity of the FPSO is anything between 2.6 and 3.3 BCM a year. Uh, which uh, is all cash flow that flows straight into the bottom line once we contract that, since there's no further capex required uh, to fill the boats, uh, which is our target. Um, on slide 18, um, when we last spoke in our results uh, of 2018, we mentioned that uh, there are four privatization five privatizations taking place in uh, Israel at the moment the first one being Alon Tavor and uh, we said that uh, this would be completed in December of 2019 the tender has happened uh, the winner of this tender is uh, a group called MRC Alon Tavor Power Limited and uh, the winning bidder uh, has signed a term sheet with us so we are continuing to win business uh, in Israel and we are continuing uh, our efforts to uh, fill up the capacity of the FPSO. Obviously, the next one uh, is uh, Ramat Hovav, which is uh, planned for next year. We will be again uh, targeting to contract with a winner and continuing to grow our, uh, our gas sales in Israel. Beyond that, uh, the government is uh, committed to shutting down uh, Units 5 and 6 in Hadera. That's 1,000 uh, megawatts that will be continued by the shutdown of another four units in Ashkelon, another 2,000 uh, megawatts of uh, coal-fired uh, generation, power generation that will switch to gas, growing the demand in Israel and putting us in a very, very favorable situation to uh, continue sales and uh, fill the, uh, the boat. And beyond that, uh, look at the next projects to increase capacity if, uh, if the market can support that. Uh, turning to Greece, uh, which uh, is continuing to uh, produce oil for us, uh, as Panos mentioned, we are reviewing our priorities. Obviously, in uh, the new world, uh, the Prinos field has a smaller impact on uh, on energy. We have continued to drill uh, the three, the two of the three wells have been completed on Epsilon. The third well uh, is ongoing at the moment. The fabrication of the platform is continuing. Installation is planned for uh, 2020, and first oil also expected in uh, 2020. Uh, on uh, Epsilon, the good news is that uh, when we drill the first two wells, we not only confirm the A reservoir, but uh, we expect to have a slight increase in the oil in place. I'm now on page 21 of the presentation. And uh, we drilled deeper than uh, the primary targets of uh, the field, and discovered uh, also hydrocarbons in the deeper reservoir, and also we discovered uh, a dolomitic zone uh, further down. That resulted in uh, a need to review and revise the development plan in order to be able to uh, access those uh, additional resources. Uh, we will be working on a CPR and uh, quantifying the amounts that have been discovered, turning them into development since uh, Epsilon platform has additional slots and uh, will be linked to the main Primus facilities. Uh, that is an easy monetization project for us. Um, in uh, Western Greece, our seismic activity has continued. Uh, page 22, we are very close to completing the 2D seismic of Repsol. Um, the prospectivity is very encouraging. Uh, uh, the preliminary estimates are that uh, we are looking at something in the range of six to 800 million barrels of gross prospective resources with four leads already identified. We have a drill or drop decision next year. We're working with Repsol uh, on an extension to, to have uh, 
sufficient time to evaluate properly the results of this uh, very exciting block. Uh, a quick update on uh, Edison. Uh, Edison is a transaction that is transformational for us. I'm on page 24. Uh, the addition of Edison uh, ENP assets to energy and brings us to a total of 639 million barrels of uh, 2P reserves. It uh, gives us a sizable and more balanced portfolio with presence in uh, Israel, Egypt, uh, Italy, Greece, North Sea, uh, UK, Norway, Algeria, and Croatia. Uh, North Sea uh, is clearly outside our uh, main footprint, and uh, we are evaluating the options that we have uh, in order to focus the business on our core competence, which is the MED. Um, a summary of, uh, of the transaction. Um, the consideration is of 850 million, 750 million upfront cash, and a contingent payment of 100 million at uh, Cassiopeia first uh, gas that we expect to be end of 2021, early 2022. And 8% profit oil royalty on two um, exploration blocks in Egypt. Uh, the source and uses for this transaction is uh, 600 million acquisition bridge from ING and Morgan Stanley. We're already working, we're in advanced stage to replace that with a long-term reserve based lending facility. And of course, uh, the remainder funding funded by uh, the equity placement we did uh, earlier in July 2019. The only update I could give is that the ongoing funding requirements with the information and the actuals to date of the portfolio that we will be acquiring look to be on the conservative side. We expect that number to, to drop. So we feel much more confident about our liquidity position end of the year and our ability to accelerate some of the projects if if need be. Uh, turning to page 26, the transaction uh, completion is expected uh, to happen before the end of the year. Uh, we have uh, raised the equity with the placement we did in July. We have uh, signed the bridge facility uh, that uh, Panos described that will fund the acquisition. And we're now in the process of get, obtaining all the regulatory approvals. Uh, I have been to most of the countries that uh, are involved in this process, and uh, I do not foresee any issues. Uh, we're working with governments to expedite uh, the approval and get the whole deal closed as soon as possible. So um, closing the presentation, our next 24 months are going to be very exciting. We have multiple catalysts uh, in Israel. Uh, we're looking at additional wells uh, with the Stena rig and utilizing the options that we have in our hands, uh, the appraisal of Karish North, first uh, gas from Karish in uh, 2021 is now very visible. So we're getting closer and closer to another transformational date for us. In Egypt, uh, with the new portfolio that we inherited from uh, Edison, we have a well that uh, will be spudded late in 2019, the North Teka offshore well, uh, the NEA, Final investment decision is expected uh, towards the end of this year. Northeast Happy is an exploration well, again, uh, that was planned by uh, Edison with uh, ENI involved as the operator. Uh, Abu Kir, the main producing asset of Edison, uh, we are looking at a range of infill drilling opportunities that uh, would extend uh, the production profile and uh, provide additional value for uh, for us from uh, the flagship project. In Italy, a number of different projects, Rospo, Cassiopeia, and Gemini, Gemini and Centora, are all uh, opportunities for us to work in Italy, subject obviously to the government uh, deciding what uh, if they want to continue with their activities there. And uh, Greece, uh, Epsilon First Oil, uh, another block in Western Greece, the Patraikos block that Edison has, and uh, Last but not least, the uh, monetization of a potential sale of the North Sea assets that uh, we will be working on in the beginning of 2020. So, Energia in a nutshell is continuing its uh, trajectory of growth. Uh, we are totally focused on delivering results uh, and focused on delivering on our promises from uh, uh, the start of the IPO until today. We are uh, on track for our project in Israel for first gas in 2021. 
uh, Edison is a transformational transaction for us, providing us multiple catalysts over the next, uh, over, the, over the coming period. With that, uh, I would like to open the floor to any questions and hand over the microphone to the operator to manage uh, the process. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do wish to ask an audio question, then please press zero one on your telephone keypad. You can also submit your question in the Q&A box on the web that you find below the presentation. And there will now be a brief pause while questions are being registered. Our first question comes to the line of Ben Ryland from Peel Hunt in London. Please go ahead. Your line is now open. <laughs> I haven't had that one before. Um, morning, guys. Um, slide 16. Um, you've shown uh, the planned exploration well path um, for some of the pr remaining prospectivity there, which I'm guessing is fair to assume are your drilling priorities. Um, what do you need to see to be able to commit to drilling these additional targets versus other opportunities that you might acquire from Edison. I'd have thought that with such large resource volumes and high chances of success, they'd, they'd be pretty difficult to displace. Uh, you're absolutely right, Ben. And this is uh, a kind of exploration that uh, is a dream exploration project for any company. 70% probability of success in uh, an area that has, uh, has an infrastructure uh, next to it uh, is obviously uh, an easy an easy one to take a decision on. Uh, what we will be monitoring very closely is developments in the market and uh, gas sales, uh, combined also with our capital discipline of how much money we want to be spending on exploration every year. And uh, we are a company that is growing. We want to make sure that we maintain uh, a safe liquidity and mm -hmm. buffer uh, for us before we commit to uh, right. deep water exploration wells. I remind you, we have 70% ownership of this uh, deep blocks with mm -hmm. Kerogen owning the 30%. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are, as I mentioned earlier, looking at the market, availability of capital, and uh, the priorities that we have also with the new portfolio that we are inheriting from Edison. But you're absolutely right, uh, it is, uh, these are wells that make a lot of sense for us to drill. Uh, obviously, we haven't made a final decision yet, so I cannot uh, commit uh, because the obvious question then would be how you fund it and whether we need more equity, and then we will start a discussion that uh, is not uh, relevant at the moment. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. I, I understand you have to go through your budgeting process before you make those decisions, but if you know if that does occur, do you? You know, do you have a feeling whether it, it, that program might start in the first half of 2020, or would it be potentially second half weighted? No, I think if we do drill wells, it will be back to back with the wells that we drill in uh, in Karish. The mm -hmm. rig is here. The drilling team is uh, operating. The whole base is operational. We would not demobilize the rig and mobilize it again. So, okay. uh, if the decision, they will be a direct continuation of, uh, of what we're doing now. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question comes to the line of Michael Alford from City in London. Please go ahead. Your line is now open. Thanks. Good, good morning, all. Uh, I've got a couple, if I could, please. Um, just, just firstly, just on, on Greece. Um, yeah, completely understand the need to review sort of capital choices with a broader portfolio. Um, but I think, you know, specifically on, on Prenos, uh, you're clearly looking to delay or, or, or end or drilling in, in the area. It's still a quite a large part of the reserve base of Greece. So I'm just wondering whether there's a risk around reserves at Prenos. And if you could perhaps talk a little bit about the medium term target you had on production, which I think was 10,000 barrels a day and by 2021, you know, what should we think about there for that production over the medium term? So that was my, sort of my first sort of question. Um, just secondly, on, on the approval process on Edison, yeah, there's a number of obviously country approvals needed. I'm just wondering if you could give a bit more colour as to the progress there. I know you've reiterated the completion date at the end of the year, but I'm thinking Algeria and other areas which were maybe a little bit more of a uncertainty on timeline, if you could perhaps update on that. Thanks. Um, yes. Uh, now, on your first question, Michael. Um, Clearly, as I mentioned during the presentation, uh, Prinos cannot be a priority when we have uh, other more lucrative opportunities for us in the portfolio. The result of the capital allocation uh, review that we went through 
uh, was that we have, uh, as we mentioned in the presentation, smart stacked the um, energy and force, which is a drilling rig, and uh, we have cut down on uh, spent in Greece. Uh, obviously, if we don't drill wells, uh, that means that production would not be uh, would not come from uh, from Prinos at the same rates. Now, with respect to reserves and uh, the risk of those, the reserves are there. They were audited, and uh, we will provide our auditors with the revised plan. Uh, I cannot comment at the moment on uh, any changes. Uh, for the time being, I think what we are doing is we want to absorb the Edison portfolio and allocate our spend uh, in the uh, assets that have the highest uh, value for our shareholders. Uh, the 10,000 barrel a day mark is uh, target is something that will come primarily from the development of the Epsilon field. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Epsilon, we're continuing to invest. That is going to be the focus uh, of the Greek uh, business. And with the additional resources that we have discovered, I think um, the, the number remains still a very realistic target. Uh, we are working on a revised development plan for Epsilon. The focus and the investment uh, in Prinos is going to be on uh, on Epsilon, but uh, I also remind you that Energian as a business and a strategy is focused on gas, and uh, the Mediterranean has a number of opportunities. Part of the capital allocation is also a review of uh, non-core assets that uh, may have a better home than, uh, than where uh, they are today. So uh, we are totally uh, focused on Greece at the moment. But uh, with a very strict capital discipline that, as Panos mentioned, uh, every project has to compete and make sure that it, re it generates the return that uh, we want for our shareholders. With respect to approvals and uh, more details, I think uh, if I was to say something, the most uh, unstable country at the moment in the portfolio is the UK, uh, and the one that, uh, of course, uh, has all the political issues that we're all facing, uh, that shouldn't affect uh, approvals. But uh, in the context of things, Algeria that you mentioned, uh, we have uh, already submitted the applications and uh, it's going through the approval process of, uh, of the country. Egypt, um, we are also, have also submitted the application. Um, we have had meetings with uh, the authorities, the government and uh, EGPC, and uh, they are very positive towards energy and taking over, primarily because we are a company which is focused in the Mediterranean, which is focused in the ENP business, and uh, Egypt will become also a, a priority area for us. Uh, Greece, and uh, which is the other country that Edison uh, is uh, present, is an easy one for us, obviously. Uh, Italy, uh, we have a new government that uh, was appointed uh, a couple of weeks back. There's a minister in place. We have avoided the uncertainty of political changes in, uh, in Italy. So we will be working with the authorities there to get that, uh, that approval in place. Uh, so those are the key countries that, uh, that are of concern. I do not foresee a problem with any of them. And uh, you know, the, the North Sea is a different story. UK and Norway, as I mentioned earlier, uh, they will be uh, part of the strategic review we're doing and uh, potentially uh, would be sold to a third party. Great, thanks for the colour. Thank you. Our next question comes to the line of Chris Wheaton from Stiefel in London. Please go ahead. Your line is now open. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, good morning. Um, a question from me, please, on the uh, gas contract uh, or the, the uh, gas negotiations with the Alon Tabor power plant. Uh, you refer to uh, 0.5 BCMA of uh, demand on one of your slides, slide 18, I think it is. Could you um, could you talk about whether your the agreement is for all of that 0.5 BCM or for a proportion? And could you also comment perhaps on pricing? Is it likely to be around the pricing on your existing portfolio, or is it? Could it be slightly better, slightly worse? Any steer would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, first of all, it's very positive that uh, we have a, another success uh, in a market that is becoming increasingly competitive. And uh, in line with our strategy, 
to take advantage of the privatizations. We have signed the term sheets, uh, as we've stated on slide 18 with MRC. It has, uh, we're working uh, to conclude the gas sale and purchase agreement. Uh, it is for the entire amount. Uh, I cannot comment on pricing. I can only tell you it's going to be in line with market and uh, probably slightly above what the prices were in the first phase of contract that, that we signed for the IPO. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes to the line of Colin Smith from Panmer Gordon in London. Please go ahead. Your line is now open. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, two, please. First of all, just I wondered if you could provide us uh, any update or insight into what happens to get Cassiopeia uh, to FID uh, and what the timing on that is. And then secondly, I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about the uh, plan to potentially supply uh, Cyprus with gas. And again, how does that happen against the current reserve base that you've got, timing and so forth? Thank you. Um, Colin, the first uh, answer, Cassiopeia uh, to FID, uh, goes through the final approval of the environmental permits by the government. And uh, once that, those are obtained, uh, FID has been taken effectively by the partners and uh, the project will happen. Uh, now that there is a new government and a new minister, uh, Edison plans to engage with them and uh, expedite the approvals. I cannot comment on timing. Um, because the government is very fresh and uh, we haven't had the opportunity to speak to them about uh, about their intention on this. Uh, with respect to Cyprus Gas, uh, we have uh, engaged into a process to apply for a license to lay a pipeline to Cyprus and uh, open a new market. The Cypriot government is uh, focused on changing uh, the mix of fuel from diesel, which is what they burn today, to gas. They have started a tender uh, and they have uh, received already offers for an FSRU to import LNG. Uh, we would be uh, submitting a proposal for a competing uh, fuel, a competing strategy and a competing uh, source of, of gas. Uh, obviously, we need to drill more wells and find more resources in order to be able to satisfy that. But as I said earlier, that the, the, those activities and those decisions go in line with uh, the demand for gas. If we see that there's more demand, we we are very confident about the resource base. We will be drilling wells, and we have the ability to drill them very quickly to prove the resources. It is very important for everybody to understand that if we want to go up to um, the uh, the 8 BCM, we can do it right now. The wells have the capacity to bring us to the full 8 BCM capacity. Uh, we need to have the reserves in order not to be uh, short of our commitments to our customers. So uh, it is not a matter of well capacity. It is not a matter of uh, ability to uh, fill the boat right now. It is a matter of us being prudent and conservative, make sure that we have discovered resources to cover all our needs. So if we see that there is a demand in the market, whether that comes from Israel, Cyprus, Egypt, other neighboring countries, uh, that we can access from our FTSO. Uh, we would be very quickly drilling wells, monetizing the resource, and bringing uh, the reserves on stream that would allow us to satisfy those uh, those contracts. Uh, and just a follow on, and Greece, and thank you for that. Um, can you just remind us how much you think a pipeline to sorry a pipeline to Cyprus would cost, and what you think the capacity would be on it? Uh, the Cypriot market is a relatively small market. Um, maximum capacity would be uh, probably one uh, one BCM. Um, we have already signed LOIs with uh, three IPPs in Cyprus. Uh, so if we do get uh, the, the permits and we do move forward, we could be supplying the, uh, the three independent power plants uh, that are being planned to, uh, to be delivered in Cyprus. So, Total market cannot exceed of 1 to 1.2 BCM. Uh, the, uh, the cost of the pipeline is in the range of 3 to $350 million. Um, and obviously, the gas is processed on the FPSO, so that's uh, just a, a simple pipeline. We would be looking to work with others, not necessarily looking to invest that ourselves. We're not a 
pipeline operator. So um, the actual investment from us would be significantly lower. Uh, it's, uh, we are focused on delivering gas, not uh, operating pipelines, obviously. Understood. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. And just as a reminder, if you do wish to ask a question, then please press 01 on your telephone keypad or submit your question in the Q&A box on the web. Our next question comes to the line of Robbie Cohen from More Mutual Funds in Israel. Please go ahead. Your line is now open. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Uh, congratulations for the good result. Just a quick one, since you just addressed the Cassiopeia project. Regarding uh, the Cataloco, is there an update regarding uh, going forward with an FID or a divestment? Uh, yeah, thank you. And very, it's uh, very well spotted that we didn't include it. Catacolo is uh, a project that uh, we are we have been working on the subsurface. Um, we anticipate an increase, a uh, substantial increase in resources um, in uh, in the block. Uh, we are working on uh, the revised CPR that we would announce towards the end of the year. Uh, the plan for the project there, where we own 100%, is to um, drill a well from uh, onshore to offshore. The decision, a final investment decision, has not been taken, as we have communicated uh, before. That uh, project would be a candidate to bring in a partner and uh, farm it, uh, farm out a part of the equity that we have today. Uh, it's a project that has been fully approved as a development plan by the Greek government. It is uh, one that we can monetize very easily, utilizing the facilities we have also in Krinos. And uh, we have uh, a plan to approach the market uh, once we have the revived CPR and uh, all the permits that we need from the local authorities. So uh, 2020, is a year that uh, we would be looking to bring a partner into the Catacolo project with an increased resource base. Great. Right. Thank you very much, Mateo. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Our next question comes to the line of Igor Kusmin from Morgan Stanley in the UK. Please go ahead. Your line is now open. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of questions. Uh, first uh, is in regards to uh, the possible updates on <clears throat> strategically how the company will evolve forward in a little bit more detail. Perhaps I'm assuming that once the, uh, the Edison transaction is uh, finished, I'm assuming that there will be more uh, granularity uh, of uh, formed around, for example, investment plans into 2020, uh, and that's what I'm alluding to. So, when possibly um, uh, might we uh, be able to sort of uh, have a little bit more understanding of what the capex is going to look like in 2020 and how, and what are the main spend areas uh, there will be? Uh, and the second question is actually quite simple: is um, uh, what is sort of the uh, operating uh, and production cost? outlook into the second half of 2019. Thanks a lot. I'll take the question on strategy. I'll hand over to Panos for the other answers, Igor. Uh, our strategy uh, for 2020 is, uh, first of all, to integrate the Edison business. And uh, it is extremely important for us to close the deal first and then make sure that we absorb not only the 280 people and the new countries that we, we take, but also make an Aegean uh, one organization. So uh, integration of uh, this transformational deal for us is uh, extremely important. The second uh, focus, equally important, of course, is uh, the delivery. Uh, and 2020 is going to be a very busy year for us of uh, the FPSO, the remainder of the wells, and uh, the uh, subsea part uh, that we need to complete in order to start up our project in 2021. So 2020 is going to be a very busy year. Uh, at the moment, uh, I don't want to talk about further investments into uh, acquisitions or anything like that, because number one priority, as I said, is integration of Edison and delivery of, uh, of gas from uh, from the carriage field. Uh, on the exploration side, organically, yes, uh, these wells that I mentioned earlier provide tremendous opportunities for us. 
uh, low cost. I remind you that uh, the Karish North exploration well was drilled in uh, at a cost of about $26 uh, million. So these are not major capital investments um, that we can easily do uh, within uh, the expanded business and the expanded availability of capital that we have to prove more resources. So those would be the three priorities for 2020. And, and we do work uh, with the addition team already uh, for the budgets going forward, uh, the short term 2020 and, uh, and obviously the long term. Uh, as Matthias mentioned, uh, we need to hit the balance right, uh, managing uh, the wider production now, the cash flows, and that was the compatibility of that transaction that brings us cash flows early instead of waiting until uh, mid-2021. Uh, so we need to hit the balance right uh, regarding managing production, prioritizing on the development projects and keeping the discipline on the exploration and choosing the right targets to have the same success as we had the first half of 2019. So it is work in progress, but when we finalize, as always, we will keep you posted uh, for and give guidance for 2020 as well as the long-term plan. Regarding cost of production, uh, Igor, the target is to stay well within the $20 per barrel. Again, looking at energy as it is today. Uh, we target to close the, the acquisition this year so we can reflect in our closing numbers in 19 the wider group. The wider group, as we have presented, is close to 70,000 barrels type of production uh, with, uh, with a bid well above 400 million. So, and, and a cost of production basis that will be well within the 15 to 16 dollars, if not lower. So, bear with us. Um, I'm in an awkward position being a CFO now that I need to be presenting financial results with a group right now that um, is not reflected of the wider and the big acquisition we did. And I hope the next results uh, we will be able to be sharing some more information about the real um, situation of the wider uh, post acquisition. Yeah, and, and one last comment from me also here. Um, on page 24, I think uh, you can see why we will be focusing completely on uh, absorbing Edison uh, Energy and post Edison and post uh, startup of Karish will be a company that's going to be producing north of 150,000 barrels of oil equivalent a day. And uh, that is the real value that uh, we have in this, uh, in this business, which is clearly not reflected in our valuation today. Because, uh, as Pano said, today people are seeing results from uh, just the Prinos field. Uh, the target, once we bring on stream the Karish field, is to be um, gas producing with all our assets, including the Edison asset, backed by long-term gas contracts, uh, and uh, north of 150,000 barrels of oil equivalent of the day. So the situation is going to be completely different um, a year and a half uh, from today. Thank you, gentlemen, very helpful. Thank you, and as a final reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad now. As there are no further questions at this point, I will hand the word back to the speakers. Please go ahead. Just a big thank you to everyone for participating today. As I said, uh, a very exciting future for us uh, on track to deliver gas from Karish and make energy and uh, one of the leaders uh, in Europe in terms of production and focus on gas. So thank you very much all for participating. This now concludes this presentation. Thank you all for attending.